So we want to make sure we're doing everything we can to make sure that those people are on the rolls and are voting. I talked with the CEO of the Voter Participation Center who tells me VPC and its sister company, the Center for Voter Information, are sending 2.7 million mailers in Florida. They're targeting people of color. Shalom. First and foremost, we praise the Most High, Yah, by Hashem Yishayim, like Yashal Amen. Amen. So, a lot of people ask me, should uh, Yashal or Israel vote? So, I want to go through that and show, you know, of course, precept upon precept, if we should do that. Okay? So, let's get right into it. So, first of all, we got to understand that whenever you do anything, um, it's got to be done with knowledge. You got to know what you're doing, why you're doing it. Um, every other nation, they have a standard that they go by or live by, right? And so Israel, we have a standard that we go by and live by. The standard that we go by and live by is, of course, the codified law or Torah that the Most High God gave us, okay? All right, so first let's establish that Israel is still a people, okay? Because for you to know, the knowledge or to understand the knowledge, you have to first have the foundational knowledge to know that my phone keeps on doing that. OK, you have to know that we are people, still a people, that we are the most highest people. OK, and if we are the most highest people, we have to follow what the most high God said. OK, it's just like if you have an earthly um, Abba, you have to do what your earthly Abba and your earthly uh, Amma says, right? Or you don't truly belong to them, right? I mean, of course, you might say you do. You might say, that's my mama, that's my dad. But truthfully, um, if you don't do what they say, you're none of theirs, just like the Most High. Same thing. Um, we're not called under religion. We're called under relationship with the Most High, okay? We have to have an ongoing relationship with the Most High, okay? So let's go to Romans 11. It says... I say then, half the Most High cast away his people, the Most High forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So we see the Most High has not cast away his people. If the Most High, watch this, if the Most High has not cast away his people, he's not cast away his laws or his standards for his people. Okay? Very simple to understand. We praise the Most High. Now, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 111 says, Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Notice, it says in the assembly of the upright. What makes our assembly upright? Because we're doing everything that the Most High God said to do. Okay? The scriptures say, don't be fooled. Okay? Um, those that do with righteousness are righteous. Okay? All right, um, let me skip down some. I'm going to start at six. It says, uh, he hath shewed his people the power of his works, okay, uh, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. Seven says, the works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. You see that? The works of his hands, the works that he did with his hands, the commandments that he gave us at Horeb, he wrote with his finger. It says, they stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. You see that? So every law that the Most High God gave to the children of Israel are still done to this day or should still be done to this day. Okay. Um, Torah says it's from generation to generation. All right. We praise the Most High. And if you are, you know, one of the Most High's people, right? If you call yourself one of the children of the Most High, if you call yourself one of the sons of God, OK, if you say that you believe on Christ, you have to what you have to understand is that our redemption um, that the Most High God sent us in his majesty, Christ, was foretold in Torah. OK, so if you keep that law, OK, you got to keep all of the laws, right? Statutes and commandments of the Most High. Right. Christ said on that day, many shall come to him saying, Lord, Lord, you know, haven't I done all this stuff? And he said, you know, get away from me. 
All right. I don't know you. Ye work inequity, meaning a lifestyle of sin. So we have to, as the children of Israel, we have to, you know, match up our lifestyle with the laws, statutes and the commandments of the Most High. We have to do what the Most High would have us to do so that we won't have a lifestyle of inequity. OK, inequity is a lifestyle of sin. And I mean, any good son or daughter would want to know what their father would have them do. OK, and whenever they find out, then they will start to do so. All right. We praise the most high. OK, let's go to Jeremiah 18 and 15. All right. Jeremiah 18 and 15 says, because my people have forgotten me. OK, that's the that's the first thing you have to examine. OK, um, how is it that the most high feels like we have forgotten him? OK, watch this. It says, because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, meaning doing things that profit us nothing. All right. It says, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths. You see that? To walk in paths in a way not cast up. The thing about the ancient people of the Most High, the thing about the children of Israel, the sons of the Most High, a lot of them, you know, they love the Most High. They say they love the Most High, right? They say that Christ is their Yeshaya, meaning Savior. Um, but they don't do what the Most High would have them do. They follow the other nations. And they do what the other nations would have them do. And what's funny is whenever you show them the truth, okay, they say, nah, we're not doing that. Which is crazy. Um... This is Jeremiah 6 and 16. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways. You see that? The Most High God said, Stand ye in the ways. Meaning, stay. Okay? Okay? Let that be your foundation. Stand on. Right? Stand on it. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways. And see. Right? The Most High God said, if you do what I tell you to do, see what shall become of you. You see that? The scriptures say, stand and see. Because we praise the Most High that he's a God of action. He does what he said he's going to do. And then every law in the Torah, okay, if you, if you don't complete it, sin is attached to it. If you don't do what the Most High have you do, then sin is going to be attached to what you do. But... If you do what the Most High would have you to do, a blessing, a blessing is attached to it. You see that? So the scriptures say, stand and see. Watch this. It says, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Okay? We need to be asking, you know, how did they do this? How did Abraham? How did Jeremiah? How did Kanach or Enoch? Right? How did... His majesty, Yeshua, Christ, do. Right? We need to see the old paths so that we can walk in the same way. The scriptures say that if we um, say that the Most High is our God and Christ is our Savior, then we should, then, then we ought to walk as Christ walked. Right? It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Whenever people hear truth, you know, it hurts. They don't want to, you know, the people want to keep doing what they've been doing from year to year to year to year. But again, that's what his majesty said. He said that on that day, whenever he comes back, many people, okay, the people, and I'm, of course, we're not even talking about people that don't believe in Christ. We're not talking about so-called Satanist or um, atheist or anything like that, right? This is not for them. We don't, you know, that we don't have anything to do with that. This is for the children of Israel. This is for the sons of the Most High God. The people that call themselves saved, right? The people that say that they believe on Christ. Okay. So if you believe on Christ. Okay. The scriptures say. If you have not the father. You have not the son. If you have not the son. You have not the father. 
Okay? So, you have to follow the law, statutes, and commandments that the Most High God gave us. Okay? To keep. You have to do that under Christ. All right? So, let's show something else. Let's go to Hebrews just really quick. Let's go to Hebrews and show something. Because many people will say, well, you know, um, now the law is in our hearts. That's the truth. It should be. And if it's in your heart, that means that you should do it. This is Hebrews. Uh, what is this? Hebrews uh, 8. And we're going to show 10. It says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Now, notice this is in the book of Hebrews. Many people say you don't have to keep the old Torah or old law. That's foolish. That's totally, utterly foolish. OK, if you don't want to keep Torah, then you don't need to say that you believe on Christ. OK, because Christ is the Torah. All right. The Torah taught you to follow Christ. All right. So if you don't believe that you need to keep the laws, do not say that you are Israelite, a Christian or anything like that, because you're not. If you don't keep the laws, statutes and commandments of the Most High, you don't belong to the Most High. No matter what you think, no matter what anybody tell you, no matter what you whatever. OK. If you don't want to keep the laws, statutes and commandments, you don't belong to Christ. OK. All right. Now, um, it says. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Okay? Saith the Lord. I will put my laws. You see that? I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. You see that? So now, understand this. If the Most High God saw fit to put his Torah in our heart, right? That we would have it with us. Why? Why? Why would the Most High take time to put his Torah or his law in our hearts? So that we would do it. You understand that? Because his ways, us completing his ways, okay, is what keeps us connected to him. You understand that? The blood of Christ does not keep us connected to the Most High. The blood of Christ uh, has cleansed us, okay? Now that we have the precious blood of his majesty, we are cleansed, sanctified, right? Under the Most High God. Now we have to continue in the laws, statutes, and the commandments of the Most High God. If anyone tells you that you do not have to keep the laws because you believe on Christ, that is antichrist, okay? That is not of the Most High. That is crazy. All right? Christ taught us to keep Torah. He taught us to keep the law. As a matter of fact, let's just show this real quick. Let's go to uh, let's go to Matthew just real quick. To praise the Most High. Okay. Matthew 28. Uh, this is the great commission that, the, um, that His Majesty gave us. Watch this. Uh, Matthew 28. 18 says, And Yeshia came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay? After he completed the work. 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Okay? So the first thing you have to do is teach. You got to teach them that Yeshia came um, in the form of flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. Okay? You got to teach them that. Then it says, oh, okay, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. So then you got to baptize them in the name of Ha'aba, the Father, okay? And of the Son, and in Christ's name, right? And of the Holy Ghost. So you have to be taught, okay? Then you have to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Then 20 says, teaching them. Then you have to be taught again, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Okay? We praise the Most High. So Christ said, you have to be taught, then baptized, then taught. Okay? And not only are you taught, you're not taught anything new. You're taught whatsoever Christ taught you in the beginning. Okay? 
knowing that Christ is what? Christ is the word. Christ is the Torah. Christ is the law of the Most High God. Right? Uh, let's prove that. We praise the Most High. As a matter of fact, let me finish 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all way, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We praise the Most High. Let's go to Revelations just really quick. I just want to prove Revelations 19. Okay, so if anybody say Christ is not the word, right? Um, Revelation 19. This is Revelation 19 and 13. It says, uh, and he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Most High. Christ's name is the Word of the Most High, or his name is called the Word of the Most High, because he is the Word. All right? Now, let's show something. Let's go to John really quick, because we really have to establish that these laws have to be kept for the holy people of the Most High. Okay, so this is 2 John 1, and I'm going to start at 3. It says, Grace be with you, mercy and peace from the Most High, the Father, and from the Lord, Yeshua Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. All right? 4 says, I rejoiced greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. You see that? Walking in truth. These, a lot of people say that they praise the Most High, but they're not walking in truth. If you praise the Most High, if you call Christ your Savior, you have to walk in truth. Okay? You don't walk around like these other nations. You don't walk around like those people that don't even have their faith in Christ. Okay? Your life should be a total opposite to them. You understand that? If you are really following the Most High in Christ, your life would be totally opposite to theirs. Okay? Watch this. It says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. You see that? As we have received a commandment from the Father. You see that? We have to keep those commandments that we received from the Father. When did we receive them from the Father? Whenever we were at Horeb, okay? When, whenever we were at Mount, whenever he gave them to Moshiach to give to us, okay? It says, um, it says, five says, And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee. You see that? So it's no new commandments. You have to understand that. It's no new commandments. All right? Just because uh, there is a renewed covenant, you, ha you have to understand the difference. There's a renewed covenant with Israel. Okay? You understand? Because Christ came down and completed the work. But there's no new commandments. Christ taught everything that the Most High God taught us from the beginning. We have to keep everything that the Most High God taught us from the beginning. We don't have to implement sacrificial law anymore because, of course, we have Christ. And Christ came and fulfilled that law. You understand? So the, the, the sacrificial portion of Torah has been fulfilled by His Majesty. We don't have to do that anymore. We praise the Most High. Okay? We don't have to have goats and things and, 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 and all of that, you know, to, to, to sacrifice. Okay? We praise the Most High. Now, it says, again, five. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. You see that? That's not a new commandment. Okay? Loving your neighbor, loving your brother as thyself is not a new commandment. Okay? That's in the Torah. You understand that? Um, we praise the Most High. Now, Six says, and this is love. Okay, watch this. It says, it says, and this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. You see that? 
Everything that we heard, everything that's in Torah, we should walk in it. Okay? Everything. Everything. We praise the Most High. Now, let's go to... Let me read 7. 7 says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yeshua Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. The reason why he said this is because in Torah it says that Christ would come. Okay? In Torah it says that Christ would come. So, if you believe on Christ, if you believe what the Most High said about his son, then you should be keeping all of the laws, statutes, and commandments. Your, the laws, statutes, and commandments are connected to your faith. Faith, Amona, Amona, faith is dead without works. That's what the scripture said. Okay? That is the reason why whenever Christ come back, whenever his majesty comes back, many people are going to come to him saying what? Lord, Lord, haven't I done all of these things in your name? He's going to say, get away from me. I never knew you. Ye work inequity. You see that? Meaning you don't keep the laws. Get away from me. I don't know you. Because Christ is holy. The Most High God is holy. The Ruach, the Holy Ghost is holy. Right? So we have to keep his holy laws. You see that? We praise the Most High. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy and show what Torah says about the topic of voting. Number one. The word vote uh, comes from the Latin. The etymology of the word vote comes from the, uh, the Latin, and it means vow, okay? Or uh, voe, vow, to make a vow. If you vote, whenever you go to the polls and vote, okay, you're making a vow, all right? You're making a vow um, that you want this to be done, okay? You're making a... a, a um, a covenant or a vow that this is what you want, right? Now, knowing this, we got to go through something. We praise the most high. Let's go to Psalm 116. Psalm 116 and 14 says, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. We are to pay our vows to the most high. We are to be able to um, discern Right, what the Most High would have us do with this word, okay? So the scriptures say, "I will pay my vows to the Most High." All right, let's go down. Let's go to sixteen. It says, "O Lord, truly I am Thy servant." Mm, you see that? We praise the Most High. Truly I am Thy servant. I am Thy servant, and the son of Thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. You see that? Again, we praise the Most High. Now, 17 says, I will offer to thee sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. 18 says, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. You see that? The Most High will not have you to be in those lines, right? Some of them people don't even praise the Most High. Okay, some of them people don't even praise the Most High. Okay, you making our Father jealous. You actually, you know, some of you actually are some of, you know, uh, make up some of the body of Christ. Make up some of the twelve families of the Most High, the twelve tribes of Israel, out there voting, or out there vowing, right, to put. Heathens in office to give heathens office to give heathens power to tell you what to do. All right, crazy. Okay, let's show something. Deuteronomy ten. Um, Deuteronomy ten, and let's read twelve. It says, "And now Israel again for the holy people, and now Israel." What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So this is what the Most High requires of us. Okay? It says, And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. 
Number one, fear the most high. To walk in all his ways. Whoa. All of them? Absolutely. All of them. Every single one of them. It says, um, and now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. I am having a lot of technical difficulty. <laughs> Satan does not want this to get out. <laughs> okay. Believe that. Okay. Again, Deuteronomy 10 and 12 says, And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Okay, one of the reasons why the Most High does not want us to do as the other nations is so that we won't become like the other nations. Okay, um, it's crazy. Even um, you know the ones of us that so-called teach and preach and all that. Whenever we conform to the ways of this world and not the ways of the Most High, we become like the world. So even in our teaching, we be afraid to say certain things. Right. We'd be afraid to to come out and actually speak the truth because, you know, uh, we, we feel like we're not politically correct or we're not socially correct or we feel like somebody might think we have like some type of social disorder or something like that. Right. Right. We, we feel like people might think that we like a social misfit or, or something crazy. And then this is the craziest part. Then because we don't want. Because we're afraid and we know, number one, the Most High God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear, right? But the Most High has, you know, given us a sound mind, a ready mind to do what does save the Most High God in Christ, okay? Then we start, we start to rationalize our own fear. Like, well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, judge and I don't want to say and I don't want to. If you're afraid. If my earthly father, if my earthly father says to me, go outside and say thus and so, I'm going to go outside and say it because that's what my earthly father said. So how much more, how much more should I go out, right, and say and do what the Most High God said? The Most High God said, let Israel know what they're doing wrong. If you're doing it wrong, I'm going to tell you. If that's what the Most High tell me to tell you, that's what I'm going to do. Because that's what he said. Period. I don't have to rationalize nothing. Okay? <laughs> People got to stop doing that. You Stop trying to rationalize your own fear. If you're afraid, pray that the Most High God would remove the fear from you. Don't make it seem like it's okay to be afraid. Okay? Because then when you do that, other people start to think, well, yeah, you know, I'm afraid too. So, Or they don't even call it being afraid. They just think that that's just their way. But this is the thing. This is the thing. It's not about your temperament. It's not about the kind of person you are. Who cares about that? It's about Christ working in you. Okay? Christ must work in you. Okay? You, you understand that? If the Most High had Christ to take a strap and actually spank grown men out of the temple because of what they were doing, that would be called, in this time, a social misfit. They would call Christ all types of stuff. But again, this is who you serve, right? This is who you serve. Okay? And understand that a servant is not greater than his rabbi, than his master. OK, Christ said that the same works he he did. We're going to do it. OK, people going to look at you like you're crazy. It's OK. It's all right. Don't be afraid of that. Do what the most I told you to do. All right. Deuteronomy 10 and I already read that. 13 says to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. You see that? So that is what the Most High said we have to do, okay? We have to love him. We got to keep his commandments. We have to fear him, okay? You got to know. You got to know whose you are, okay? If you belong to the Most High in Christ, you got to know Christ. You got to know who Christ is, okay? You got to know what the Most High would have you do, all right? We praise the Most High. Now, 
Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 17 and 14 says, When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, uh, whenever we come, okay, whenever we have a place to dwell, you know, whether it's in America or wherever, okay, listen. It says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it. So you have a possession, okay? It says, And shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, okay? Like as all the nations that are about me. All right? 15 says, Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. The Most High God said, You can have a king, okay? Just like all the other nations. You can have a king, all right? You can have someone that gives you laws and that gives you direction and that gives you rule and that rules over you. That's fine. You can have that. Okay? Watch this. It says, Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. You see that? So number one, you don't choose him. We praise the most high. Then it says, One from among thy brethren... So he has to be an Israelite, meaning he has to praise the Most High. If you praise the Most High, if Christ is your Savior, then your ruler should praise the Most High. Okay? Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. You see that? You cannot set a stranger over you. That's not your brother. You see that? We praise the Most High. So now we see, without a shadow of a doubt, you cannot set just anyone over you. Right? Then, number one, you can't even set them over you. The Most High God is going to set them over you. The Most High God is going to choose whom he would have to set over you. Okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy 18 real quick. Let's see. Because the Most High is wonderful. The Most High already set a king over us. You see that? We praise the Most High. Deuteronomy 18. Uh, it says, Deuteronomy 18 and 13 says, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Okay? For these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times and unto the and unto diviners, but as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. 15 says, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. You see that? So the Most High God kept his own law, all right? And he set a king over us. He set his majesty over us, the arm of God, the power of the Most High. The word of the Most High, the man known as Jesus Christ. You see that? The Most High already set us a king. The Most High has already given us a king. Okay? So, for us for us to go back now, okay? For us to go back now and try to set other kings over us, we're sinning. That's sin. That's inequity. Okay? Now, let's show something. Let's show something. Now, you know, somebody might say, Christ is not our brother. Christ is our savior. Absolutely, he is. But he's also our brother. He's also our brother. We praise the Most High. And he came out of Israel. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 2 and 11 says, For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all one. So we are one with Christ. OK, then it says, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them Achim or brethren. You see that? That's our brother. Christ is our big brother. We praise the most high. Then it says, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. There it is. That's what he said. We are his Achim or brethren. Then it says, in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. We praise the most high as the sons of the most high. As um, soldiers of the Most High, we should not even entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life. 
Okay, that's what the scriptures say. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2 and 4. It says, no man that warreth, of course, the context is um, us warring against evil. Us being the soldiers of the Most High in Christ and warring against evil on a daily basis. Okay, so being partakers of the understanding of Christ, being made perfect through Christ, right? We would not entangle ourselves with the foolishness of this earth. Okay, watch this. It says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You see that? Watch this. It says, and if a man also strive for masteries, meaning you strive to be perfect in Christ. Torah says that we will be perfect in the Lord thy God, right? So we can be perfect, right? We can be, uh, in the Hebrew, uh, mushlam, perfect, or twamim, meaning perfect or free of debt, right? We can be free of debt in his majesty, in Christ, right? But to do that, we have to do it lawfully. We have to do it by Torah. We have to do it as it is written in the Torah. Watch this. It says, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, meaning you will not be given, right? The knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, you will not be given uh, the crown of mastery, all right? Except he strive lawfully. Mm. So now, what law do we have to do or, 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 or are we under? What understanding, what rule are we under? That's the law of the Most High. We have to strive lawfully, meaning keeping the laws, statutes, and the commandments of the Most High God. Right? We praise the Most High. And we know that we cannot vow a vow unless it be to our Father. The scriptures say we will pay our vows to the Most High. All right? Or in the Most High, of course. We cannot make any covenant with the heathen. Let's go to Revelation 22. We're trying to wrap up now. Remember, vote from the Latin, voi. It means to make a vow. In the Hebrew, nara means to make a covenant. Okay, so we don't we don't make a vow or covenant with anyone but the Most High. We praise the Most High. The scriptures say we will pay our vows to the Most High. All right. Revelation 22 and 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. You see that? You'll be blessed if you do the commandments of the Most High. You understand that? It says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. You see that? So you're going to be blessed if you do the will of the Most High. You're going to be blessed if you do what the Most High God said. You don't have to worry about what this party is saying or what this party is saying. All of that is something that's put together by the seed of Satan to keep your mind off Christ. All that don't matter. They're going to do what they want to do regardless. Okay. They have certain systems in place to circumvent. Even if your so-called vow counted. Okay. Their system. Okay. Of electoral college votes. Right? <laughs> electoral votes will circumvent that anyway. They want, they'll have whoever they want to have doing whatever they want to do regardless, okay? So understand this. The only thing that we, as the Most High God's people, need to be concerned about is doing what the Most High God will have us to do. Do you understand that? That's the only thing we need to be concerned about. Anything else is sin. Anything else is going outside of what the Most High will have us do. The Most High God has already given us a king, and his name is Christ. Okay? The scriptures say, touch not another man's sin. These people lie. 
right? Okay? These people lie. These people steal. These people cheat, right? Just because one sounds better than the other. You know, a lot of people say, you know, you vote for one devil and, and kick another devil to the side. They're both devils. They're both liars. The word devil means deceiver. They, they're both deceiving you. Okay? Let's go to Nehemiah real quick, and we're going to be done in just a second. I feel like I'm, I've already proved it, but we just want to go a little. I'm going to show something. Nehemiah 10 and 28. And the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Nephanims, and all they that separated themselves from the people of the land to the Torah of the Most High. You see that? We have to be separated from the people of the land. We have to be separated from the people of the land. It says, um, and the rest of the people, the priests, the, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Nephilim, and all they that had separated themselves from the people of the lands unto the Torah of the Most High, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding. You see that? Those are the ones that will separate themselves from the people of the lands. As Allah Ruach. Those are the ones that will separate themselves from the people of the lands. The thing about it is, the love of the world, the love of this world is not of the Father. What you have to understand is that the Most High gave us a way. Okay? The Most High gave us a way. And we have to follow that way. All right? Just because something seems right, just because something seems like it's okay, doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it okay. We have to follow what the Most High God said. Scriptures say that we're not to lean on our own understanding. We're supposed to do what thus saith the Most High God of Israel. We cannot lean on our own understanding. Okay? I'm going to read one more thing. This is Sirach 17 and 17 in the uh, Apocrypha. It says, For in the division of the nations of the whole earth... He set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion. You see that? I'll read it again. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion. You see that? So again, I'm not saying that the other nations selecting kings and presidents and, you know, potentates and all of that is wrong. I'm saying that it's wrong for Israel to be a part of that. It's wrong for Israel to take part in selecting a heathen president. It's wrong for Israel to take part in selecting a heathen uh, overseer, right? We already have our king. We already have our Lord. We already have the one that's over us, that you know, has put together what we need to do as a people. Of course, we live in Babylon. Of course, we live in Babylon. Right. But even though we live in Babylon, that doesn't mean that we need to partake of the things that go on in Babylon. OK, we need to do the things that the Most High would have us to do. We have to separate ourselves from the people of the land. Then we will see prosperity in our lives. OK. Then we will see things begin to happen in our lives. Whenever we put the Most High first, whenever we put the Most High where he, where it's like, how can you feel as though your destiny, or I'll say destiny, or your future hangs on a man in office? That's crazy. That's not our understanding. That's not who we are. We belong to the Most High. We belong to the Most High in Christ, right? If you. Come under his majesty. Understand that you have to keep his laws, his statutes, and his commandments. Okay? Christ said that I have given them thy word. Right? The same words that 
the most high God gave to Christ, he gave to us that we would keep them. Right? Christ came to fulfill Torah. Right? He came to fulfill Torah. We praise the most high. Shalom.